I feel like I set like my dreams, like the bar for my dreams, like so low. <laughs> like, yeah, I want to work at a skate shop. I looked yeah. like a fucking 23 year old. I'm fucking <laughs> over 30. And it's like, hey, see, new core, beach hardcore. Yeah. It's like... G'day, guys, and welcome back to Skate Mates, where we talk about skating with our mates. I'm here with the good mate, Del Decker. And Daisy. And Daisy. <laughs> how are you today, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. <laughs> Dude, this is sick. I'm really stoked to have you on. Yeah. Daisy's going nuts right now. Yeah. She's like, what are you, who's ta- who are you guys talking to? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you in... Well, I feel like it's been like a year, dude. It probably has. Yeah. yeah. So I have a series of questions here that I think I want to know, but I think like everybody else is wanting to know as well. Okay. There's a few niche questions in here. First one here is, what was your first exposure to skateboarding? Probably Tony Hawk Pro Skater. THPS one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was It, it was like a, a game you got for Christmas or your birthday or something? We would go and rent it. You remember when you would rent Dude. video games? Yes. Yeah. 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 So we would rent it, and then I think that was, yeah, that was the first. But I was, because I was exposed to, like, all extreme sports at the same time. Did you think much of it? Or were you, like, instantly hooked? Dude, like, it, I thought skating was the lamest one. Really? <laughs> what, was, what was better, BMX or something? So weird with, like, what I'm into now. Yeah. Because, like, I fucking love hardcore. Yeah. Like, super, you know what I mean? Like, where I, like, the stuff I'm into, it's weird. But, like, dude, I thought skating was, like, just a bunch of tight pants, lame <laughs> punk rock wannabes. <laughs> so what? When did the shift take place? We were like, dude, skating's dope. Like when I was like thirteen, and like okay. all the because I did because I would go to the skate park. My dad would take me, um, and I would like full rocket power, dude. Like oh, you I would take like, skateboard, I would take my bike, and I would take my rollerblades. Dude, you were like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like rocket points. power kid. Yeah. yeah, rollerblading was was my favorite. Really? Out like an aggressive in line. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I had an aggressive in line phase when yeah. I was 11 for a bit. I liked it too because it, cause like, it didn't take much to learn how to grind right away. Yeah. And like, that's the thing I always thought was the sickest Grinding. out of every extreme sport. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not to like, I'm not downgrading roller, but they're devaluing yeah. that. No, they do I'm some, they, like back in the 90s and early 2000s, they were doing like some wild stuff, like big yeah. stuff. Too. Yeah. It just felt attainable to be, I was like, oh, I can probably learn to grind the fastest on these. So uh-huh. like, I just want to learn to grind. Right. Yeah. So how did you minus the rest of them and then just go to skating? At my school, like all the kids around me that like I kind of hung out with and then like the cool, it's funny because like he was the coolest kid back then, okay. Josh. Oh, Josh. Josh after Josh. Yeah, Josh, my <laughs> best friend who does like all my tattoos. But yeah, he was like the cool kid and like right. he skated and yeah. everyone surrounded him was like, oh, Skating. Josh is skating. Yeah, it's like skate. You know, I could like already ollie, shove it, and board side. Oh, and, like, so you were already kind of fairly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I could grind on a bike and like do all this shit. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, they're all skating. Like, mm-hmm. It's like you know, I'll take my skateboard and I'll like do that shit. You know, they were really into like Bam and Jackass and CKY. <laughs> so that was like the thing that kind of like that was the push. Me. Yeah, because you're originally from Michigan. Yep. So this leads me to the next question: What was it like skateboarding in Michigan? Cold. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like Garage. it's like winter, like nine months out of the year or whatever, isn't it? Yeah, and it was it was colder back then, dude. The winters are weird now there because it's like it'll be thirty degrees one day in like fucking January, and then literally the next day it's like sixty five. Oh, so it's just like yeah, super it's linear. it's weird there now, dude. It's wow. like they they don't get that much snow even anymore, but it's just global warming, dude. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So you were skating like just garages and stuff, like parking garages or like your Dude, parents' garage. Yeah, like and it's it's funny because like we we made do with like what we had, but yeah. it's like you know everyone in the Midwest like has a garage. It's not like a rich thing to like have a garage, right. you know, like it is out here. Yeah, you know, or like a basement. Like most people had basements. For sure. You know, skating in the garage. I was like, fuck, man, it's winter. We got to skate in the garage. It sucks. But now, like looking back, I'm like, dude, that was so sick because yeah. we would build like little stair setups in the yeah. garage and fucking like put put the flat bar down it and like make handrails and dude it was i feel like back then like because you're a kid your imagination your creativity is so much bigger back yeah then. yeah so like having that small space to do whatever like i got my most skating done when i was a kid but my mom was like hey we're gonna go over to my friend's place and i'd be like okay and i'd have to like skate the street in front of the house and just figure it out yeah, yeah, figure yeah. out stuff to do you know i've only ever known you from youtube the first video mm-hmm. I seen of you was the the cheek bearings or the cheek wheels versus like the expensive wheels, something right, like yeah. that. That was the first. That video was like I my seen. first video that that like did really. Yeah. Well. What did you do like before YouTube? Like, Worked jobs, dude. Just odd jobs. Yeah, dude. It's weird because I don't. And I mean, obviously, I'm in my early thirties now, yeah. so it's like 
obviously I don't know what people in their mid to early 20s are doing. I, it was like super normal back then that everyone yeah. had like a job or two jobs. And I feel like now people are... People know what they want to do when they're like 18. They're like, I want to do this. And then they like... I feel like yeah. now it's like those things, because of all the information we have, are more attainable now. Because back then it was like, well, you got to work and then kind of figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, you know, I don't really know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know people are like obviously still working. Like, yeah, yeah, but, definitely people will still work. Yeah, but, <laughs> but like, there's, there's more options now to work. Cause yes. like, like I didn't even know that YouTube was like a thing at all until uh -huh. the year that I started. I know, I was like, people fucking do that. Like what? And yeah, then, you know, there's this whole like arc of like first generation creators on YouTube. It's yeah. like PewDiePie, Jenna Marbles, like yeah, yeah. all these all fucking heads. yeah. And it's like, I didn't know that that was even like a thing. I didn't consume YouTube like that at all. Yeah, I just worked, like I worked at Whole Foods for like three years. Okay, I, cool. That was like my first job when I moved out here. Yeah. I worked at restaurants, I was like a server. I've right. like been a dishwasher. I, I worked at a motorcycle shop. Dude, that's pretty dope, the motorcycle shop. Yeah. yeah. Was it like a, like a mechanic or like a I wasn't doing any of that. I was just listing all the shit on eBay. Oh, so. dude, that's even better. You didn't have to get your hands dirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would. It would be cool if I like knew a lot of that shit, uh -huh. but you know, I didn't know it. Yeah, motorcycles are dope, man. But before I moved here, what I did, I was yeah. like, I I worked okay. at, to eventually become manager of a skate shop in Michigan. Okay, see. So, yeah. so that was kind of like the passionate like um this is my drive towards what I want to do. Yeah, I mean I always wanted to like either work at a skate shop or like it's it, dude, it's funny thinking back now because I feel like I set like my dreams, like the bar for my dreams like so low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to work at a skate shop or like run a skate shop. And yeah. I, and I feel like I did that like pretty easily. I'm yeah, like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then like I did the YouTube thing and then I got yeah. to the point I was like, oh, damn, like maybe I should like set my bar a little higher. Yeah, I don't no. know. Goals are important, dude. Even yeah. if they're small, they're like little stepping stones. Yeah. yeah. You know? Like I always wanted Tacoma, now I have Tacoma and I'm yeah. like, damn, this was really my dream car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sounding ungrateful, but like, no, I, love I love it, dude. So this next question <coughs> is interesting to me. It's probably interesting to a lot of people as well, because people that follow you and that watch your channel, you did make a video on this a few years ago. Why did you become sober? And when um, did you become sober? Almost 14 years ago. Wow. Yeah, I was 19. I mean, I was just kind of like, it's, you know, I, I, at the time, I really felt like I had a problem. You know, no matter the circumstance, I, like, couldn't stop. But then, you yeah. know, like, looking back at that now, I'm like, eh, it was probably, like, low-key, I was probably just, like, a wild kid. Like, yeah. a, a normally-ish wild kid. But it's like, that doesn't mean I want to, like, go drink right now. Or, like, yeah. go do drugs or smoke weed or anything. Yeah. You know? Like, I don't, I don't, need, I don't even have, like, the desire to, like... Probably because I'm like so fucking opinionated that like I just like I think it's whack, you know? Dude, that's a very young age to make such a pinnacle kind of decision. Yeah, well, so the the like I'll I'll tell a secret, you know, and it's not really a secret, it's just kinda like, you know, a vulnerable uh, mm -hmm. share. But I felt like if I got sober and like lived a sober life, yeah, that, that was gonna put me like ahead to be able to like get the things that I wanted. So like I You're not wrong yeah maybe not but I mean I, I feel like it's like a little bit of a condescending attitude maybe no I don't think I mean I got sober around the same time and the reasons for me becoming sober was like my dad was a you know still is a drug addict and I seen that and I, it's fun when you're 15 16 you can just go in the bush with your mates and have a bonfire I get drunk but then I started thinking to myself like what comes from this like years down the track am I gonna yeah. end up like my dad dude for sure like, what what is the next thing and then like I come from a family of alcoholics so it's like dude, okay, same. my uncle has diabetes because he was an alcoholic and mm -hmm. you know this and that and the other it's like I don't want that my my whole family they all have like either drinking or drunk problems or like yeah. they're addicted to gambling or some shit yeah so like is yeah, the yeah. addictive personality thing like runs yeah. thick in my family. So I mean like at the time, yeah, I was very like, dude, I know where this leads. You know, you know, you go to rehab and then like yeah. and everyone's like, Yeah, you're gonna fucking end up like then you know, the counselors there. Like, yeah. yeah, do you wanna fucking end up like me with like I'm forty five, got sober like five years ago because yeah. I was like laying in an alleyway with a needle stick out of my arm. I was like, Yeah, you know, you kinda get scared straight. You do. It's never too late to become sober if anyone is forty five in the alley. <laughs> What? If anyone is 45 in an alleyway. <laughs> Dude, yeah, no, it's, it's not. I mean, it's, it's, it's never slated to become sober. I've no. seen the most hopeless people get sober. Just and then 180. Fuck. Dude, yeah. And then, like, it, they're, they're 10 years sober, and, like, you hear their story, and yeah. it's like, you went from that 
to like where you are now, like it's fucking insane. Yeah, because it is poison. You are poisoning your brain. Like I always say to my girlfriend about drinking, you're just paying to like destroy your brain. Yeah, and the it's thing like just yeah. dumbing you down. That like the thing that I think is like so whack too is just like how normalized oh. drinking is in the because world. it's legal because they can yeah. tax it. It's like you see all the ads. Oh, well, you can fucking tax yeah, weed. Yeah. Like why? Why isn't that legal? That's like much more chill. There's just more kind of. Snakes and ladders. Drinking is because, you know, there's like fucking a giant culture around it. Like yeah. with watching fucking sports games. Super they serve lines. alcohol. Full yeah. Yeah. It's just it's, thrown in your face. Yeah. Like and that. it's just like people are making money off this like fucking poison. And I, yes. mean, I know obviously I'm a fucking hypocrite. We all, are, <laughs> we all have our vices. But it's like, you know, it's like, dude, drinking leads to like it, real fucking just, issues. Yes. You'll see people that smoke their entire lives that like yeah. don't get lung cancer and they're yeah. fine. I'm not saying that smoking or anything is good for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying you drink your entire life, you're gonna lose your liver and yes. your pancreas 100. percent Yeah, you could even lose limbs, dude. My yeah. dad had a friend back home. He had to have his leg amputated from the knee down. Yeah, diabetes and alcohol. My dad's had a number of toes chopped off just because. Dude, yeah, you know, it's not crazy. Drinking is the worst shit. Drea had like a big party phase throughout yeah. her 20s, dude. The second she stopped drinking, she lost like 40 pounds. Yeah, it's Drea crazy. used to be 40 pounds heavier. Really? She was like, yeah, she like had a like a beer body wow you know and it's then, just wild to, dude yeah it's like it's it's all those calories man all that fucking sugar all that yeah. gluten like that shit is not good for you yeah this kind of trickles into the next question okay and i know a lot of people are wondering probably the same thing i don't know if you've spoken about it much previously on podcasts or videos or whatever hardcore music Oh. What was your exposure into that scene? Exposure to the scene was kind of like around the same time that I like got into skating, okay. you know. And like the fucking screamo shit was like big then. You yeah, metalcore and shit. Yeah, you had like the used. All of those bands, dude. I feel like every one of those bands. Taking Back Sunday, the used, fucking Chiodos, Under Oath. All of those bands are all like <clears throat> gateway bands into hardcore. Yes, you know, dude. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and it's weird because I feel like at the time I was like, I want, I just want to find the hardest shit. Yeah, you know, so I'm listening to like bands like, you know, first like Devil Wears Prada, uh-huh. and then it's like fucking Knights of the Abyss. <laughs> you remember that band? Yeah, and then it's like fucking August Burns Red. Yes, Parkway Drive. Yes, like dude. yeah, I killed the prom queen. <laughs> yes, dude. yeah, it's OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but all those bands kind of led me to I feel like was like the first real hardcore band, and I and I know like a lot of people are probably gonna be like damn that's such like a mall way to get into it well because it's like i feel like most people's first hardcore band is like fucking hate breed marauder not necessarily like my first hardcore band was parkway drive yeah my first hardcore band like that i could say is like okay that's like true hardcore it's Mm -hmm. trapped under ice like I heard trapped okay. under ice and I was How's like, "How's that a mole way though?" It's like you feel like they're not, but it's just not. I don't know. You hear like you hear people talk about how they got into hardcore and they're like, "Dude, yeah, I fucking listen." I heard Black Flag and I was like, this "Oh, is that, it. that's like that was before our time." It like, for sure was. You know? Yeah, yeah. But trapped under ice was like the first band. I was like, "Whatever this is, I yeah. like, and I want to explore everything that encompasses okay. this." Okay. Yeah. I think my first like hardcore hardcore was like Terror. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, Yeah. or like First Blood. I saw Terror before I even like, oh, dude, I I fucking saw Terror with like a mirror. Really? Yeah, back in the day. Dude, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be that kid, I'd come home from school, go on YouTube and just look at like videos of like people filming at shows, watch the pit. That's how I learned my moves, dude. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think we all did that. Yeah. Your move to California, that was... What was that driven by? What kind of pulled you towards coming to the skating, West Coast? Skating, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You was, just wanted to skate? Like, you were just like, well, it was just like, skate. it was like a last ditch effort to like follow like the pro dream. Yeah. I mean, I, I was 22 when I moved here. I already felt like I, I was too old. Yeah. At 22, I was like, damn, I'm like not really flow yet mm-hmm. or anything. So I was like, eh, it's kind of over. Like, like I already kind of like had that mindset. I was like, yeah, it's kind of over. Right. So then I moved here as kind of like a last ditch effort. Yeah. And like, <clears throat> Things kind of happened. They started to. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I don't even know what Sovereign is doing now, but like in the early stages of Sovereign, I was like a part of that, kind of filming for that stuff. And like, you know, it, it had its like little peak and, you know, it had Alex Midler and like Mikey Taylor was on it. Um, so I was like going out with those guys. When I, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. In like 2015 ish. Um, you know, I was like working at Rip and Dip. Oh, this is back in the day. Dude. Yeah, Rip and Dip was like still, uh, you know, semi cool so i was doing all that so i had like i had like ties i had like some pieces in place Mm -hmm. to like really make it happen if i wanted to but like like what i would have had to do to like make that happen i wasn't willing to do like i didn't want to be 
a fucking skate rat sleeping on a couch yeah. until like one day like all right we're gonna make it happen and like you know i didn't i didn't like push myself as hard as like it's a sacrifice dude. yeah yeah i mean you know and it's like dude a lot of kids that grow up here kind of like kind of get it i feel like a little bit easier and i'm not saying that to just because well, they're born here right He's you yeah. can just stay it's fucking just, home. Yes. You can just stay home and yes. like and like you know like yeah. all right I'm gonna make it happen like I'm still on my parents' health insurance yep. you know yep. so I was working I was always working like at least two jobs at a time yeah right you okay. know so I did, busy man yeah dude well because like you know I would have like a fucking girlfriend and like mm -hmm. I didn't want to be like the shitty skater boyfriend <laughs> and like so I'm like all right yeah. I guess I should I should definitely fucking work yeah so I like didn't go out with the sovereign guys enough mm -hmm. because I like had to fucking work six yeah, days yeah had yeah you didn't want to be a bum yeah I didn't want to have money yeah exactly but I but I did buy a car for like five hundred dollars you bought a five hundred you drove it out from Michigan yeah it lasted me like a year what kind of car was it uh, Chrysler Sebring the Michael Scott car really yeah that lasted that long dude. yeah for like, an, for like a year yeah it, <laughs> but there was like dude like the last like four months like that shit would overheat every oh, time I started it, it yeah like I could get to work like you know if, if we're going out and skating like I'm always making sure like all right I gotta ride something yeah, it's dude. Now, how good is it to just jump in your car and just kick it over and go? You don't have to worry about oh, that God, shit. Dude, it's so nice. Yeah, I, mean, I I just for the first time in my life bought like a, it's not brand new, so like, but like I bought a reliable new, yeah. brand new vehicle for the yeah. first time ever. Yeah, it feels fucking great. I have AC. Like my last car was sick. Like I had like that old Lexus. Lex yeah, 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 it was yeah. cool, but like I didn't have fucking AC. Yeah, and it was fucking like you know it had over two hundred thousand miles on it. It would have lasted, but it's like. You wanted fucking to move into something a bit more comfortable. The seat's all fucking ripped up. I yeah. looked like a fucking 23-year-old. I'm fucking <laughs> over 30. I'm like, dude, what am I doing? Like, like, no wonder people don't take me seriously. You know? How I look at you is I see, like, you're very driven. You're a very driven person. Oh, really? Like, why do you look surprised? I don't know, man, because I feel like I'm such a... Like, this is going to sound so dramatic and, like, fucking poor me, but I feel like I'm just such a fucking loser. Why? I don't know. I always felt like that. I think that I think is that, is that I think that's why I'm probably so driven because I'm because me internally I feel like a loser so I'm like all right well like you want to you got to be driven then like yes. at least so yeah. you're not a loser yeah or like so you can at least be like a good loser like a better loser you know yeah but you've accomplished some feats in your life dude you know yeah you got to look at all the accomplishments I'm, I'm grateful for sure yeah still yeah. feel like a loser <laughs> there's a thing called imposter syndrome so once you achieve these things you start to all this stuff starts happening and you're kind of like do I really deserve all this shit am I just kind of a poser am I like what am I a loser and this stuff just is it just luck I felt that way with skateboarding for like probably like the first few years I felt like an imposter okay you know because like I didn't initially think skating was that cool right. like, I, like I thought the other things were cool I thought BMX was cool yeah. I was like a motocross kid dude yeah, like, right. I used, love, used to race motocross. I love motocross. I, was yeah. kid. I thought that was so fucking cool. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> it's a very expensive. Yeah, hobby, so, yeah, that's exactly why I stopped. Yeah, because I'm like, <laughs> all right, we can't do this. Like, yeah, I don't feel like an imposter with skating all like at all anymore. Like, yeah. I feel like skating is very much like, all right, that's who I am. Dude. That's my yeah. home. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The thing that I do still a little bit to this day feel like a little bit of an imposter when it comes to hardcore. Why? Um, because it's like, I didn't really feel that so much until I moved out here and I moved to like a bigger city and you right. see like what like real hardcore is like fucking East LA hardcore. And I'm like, damn, yeah. like, like they grew up way different than me. Like yeah. the lyrics and like the, the message is, is so much more like truthful. And it's like, dude, back in Michigan, it was like, mm. you know, like, yeah, we all had our fucking shit, but by no means that I grow up like in like, I didn't grow up in the inner city dealing with the troubles the that same. bring yeah. from the inner, inner city. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, like, I have a fucking dysfunctional family and shit. Yeah, it's just different, man. I, I So so I feel a little bit, a little bit of an imposter there just because mm. I'm like, I'm like, eh, I didn't really like. Yeah, but I feel like hardcore speaks on all volumes and to all levels. For know? sure. But, dude, it's like in Michigan in 2010, it was like fucking really crazy because all those fucking hardcore kids. All of them were from like fucking Farmington Hills, which is like the Farmington Hills, the nice rich area of Detroit, and they're like claiming yeah. like they're from See, Detroit, and I'm like, yeah, you're from fucking Farmington Hills, it's, dude. It's, it's a niche. It's like a cool like. I we used to have a crew. It was SWSHC Southwest Sydney Hardcore, and I had basketball shorts made up with an SWH uh, SWSHC down the side, dude. Yeah, and would go to shows and fucking be a crew. Yeah, and it's, it's like. like 
it's 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 like it's like being like yeah we're fucking Ithaca hardcore Ithaca New York and yeah. that's like upstate New York we're all like the fucking white collar kids that like right. go to U of M and shit. So it'd be like, like a hardcore band from Newport Beach, California. Right, and it's Newport like HC. Newport oh, Beach oh, hardcore. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> dude, shut the fuck up. There, that, yeah, there I can nothing see crazy that. going on in Newport. I can see that. Yeah, there was uh, there was like a few people in the scene back home that were like from, you know affluent kind of areas and affluent yeah, families yeah. that were like playing this character yeah 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 are you like the type of person to be like all right i have a goal in mind are you strategic about chasing goals is what i'm trying to ask you um i would say i'm more bullheaded than i am strategic what do you mean like 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 just aggro about getting it like okay. like like i'm gonna do that no matter what i do and like we'll yeah. we'll address all the problems once they arise right so like like that's how my jujitsu is like okay. my ju- my jujitsu and my skating's like that. Yes. I'm a very like yeah we're gonna fucking dive headfirst in and we're just gonna fucking go for it. Under reverse then, engineering. A li- is it? Because you're just like Wah! and then it's like and if anything arises along the way we'll figure it out kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's kind of maybe not. Yeah. I'm I'm not like a <laughs> no. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm not like a detail oriented person. So like yeah. I miss details all the fucking time. I'm like a concept person. I pay okay. attention to like I pay attention to the concept of how whatever I'm doing is, I look look at the bigger picture, I'm like, oh, all right, all right. Yeah. Sometimes it fucks me because I'm an overthinker. Okay. Like, I mean, for the last fucking handful of years, it's fucked me because I'm like, I You're overthought. too much. I overthought my YouTube shit into yeah. a point where I was like, not really posting, not making good videos. I mean, I was posting, but I'm just posting to like, it's clear that I'm like, hey, I'm at the skate park and we're skating, mm. all right. You want that really happen. You want there to be some substance behind it. Too, yeah, right? it's like the, it's like my shit became like The Walking Dead, dude. It's like, <laughs> it's like that show was so fucking good, and then like at a certain point, it was like, wh- what's the story with this? Why, yeah. There's a kingdom. We yeah. have a, we have like a kingdom now. I try to be. I try to like think about it a little bit so I can have some type of strategy that's going to leverage me more closer towards that goal instead of just okay. being like, here's the goal. I'm just gonna fucking go for it. Yeah, see, that's kind of what I do, but I but, but like, Sorry, it's it's <laughs> it's like it's like right now, like because I'm diving headfirst back into YouTube, I'm yeah. I'm trying to be a little bit more strategic about it, and actually like, it's just hard for me to like commit to things, like I guess in like a traditionally proper way, mm. like and be like, all right, we gotta follow this strategy, follow that okay. strategy, and like we're gonna stick to this and see how it goes. Yeah. But what but what like my brain can grasp onto is be like, there's that one giant goal that's like kind of all encompassing of what we want. And like focus on that and just go yeah. for that and try it, throw a bunch of shit at the wall. I'm kind of, yeah, I've kind of notoriously been like throw a bunch of shit at the wall uh-huh. and see what sticks approach. Yeah, everybody has a, the different process, dude. Yeah. It's just fun to like pick other people's minds because I feel like if I don't have that strategy, I'm just like overthinking and idle hands of the devil's playground. So I'm just like, yeah. what do I do? Oh, I don't know. Is, it, is, it, is this even worth doing? Like, I'm halfway now. It looks like shit. Um, See, that's why I need to just like, should I just stop? I'm shit. You know what I mean? See that I, I do that if I over, if I strategize, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to use the term over strategize. Yes. If I, if I get over obsessed with strategy, I do that. Like uh, I, I, it's I, almost too much information. Well, yeah. Cause I'm, I'm like, all right, I got to do this. I got to do that. And then I start like, I kind of think myself into this corner where uh-huh. I don't do anything. Where it's like it's like paralysis analysis. Yes. Yeah, and I'm yes. just like you're overwhelmed and you just shut down. Well, yeah, because I'm like, all right, I got to do this, and if I'm and if I don't do it in this strategic way, then I'm just not going to do it. And then like that turned into fucking two ish years of like my YouTube channel kind of just yeah. like being shit. My big thing is like just fucking keep it simple, and which yes. I learned from AA. Okay. Like yeah. it, like keep a lot of a lot of those like principles did transition over to my life, but it's like. Dude, just fucking keep it simple and like do the thing. Like just yeah. do the thing. We have, um, I don't know if it's a saying here, but there's a saying in Australia. I don't know how many P's it is, but it's like prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So fucking what's that? Six P's? Yeah. We say that and it, that, that kind of gives me like, all right, I've got to have a plan of attack and you know what I'm doing because then I'm, you know, there's a guide for me to follow. Yeah. I mean, and I, I like that. I think I do do that. I just like can't think about it too hard because I'll yes. think myself into not doing anything. What is your ideal life for you now, your age or our age, I should say. Yeah. 
you know, because about 10 years ago, it would just been like skating, skating, filming, skating, you know what I mean? So the question is like, what's, what's my ideal life now? Like, what's that vision look like? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be a bit of a paradox to what I said earlier. I feel like I've set my goals. I've set the bar for my goals too yes. low. Yes. I just feel like naturally I see the world very black and white. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think the answer always kind of lies in the gray areas. Everything's nuanced. Yes. Everything. So I think it's a mix of both like setting goals, you know, like kind of, you know, cause it's like, I did, I, I have set goals yes. and I have achieved them. You crushed them, dude. Yeah. And it's like, but, but it's like, now it's like, okay, now you need to, you need to keep raising the bar every time. Yes. But also simultaneously, the vision that I have for my life is kind of the life that I have now. And, and not in the sense of like what I have or like mm. where I might be financially because I'm putting a lot of focus like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of compartmentalizing my focus when it comes to finances and wealth and success and that yes. kind of like and how do you even how do you even measure wealth like like do you measure wealth having diabetes but like four billion dollars yeah. in the bank. Not me. Yeah. Fuck not me. me. Like my, like I take my health very seriously. Now. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's like, like I know it and I know like I'm, a, I fucking say that while I'm sucking on this fucking <laughs> digital cigarette juice. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I get it, but it's like, I feel like we all have our vices. Yeah. We're all allowed of vice. That's We're only mine. human. Yeah. We're only but human. I think the real goal is like, what lifestyle do you want? To yes. Be? That's, yes. that's what you, and like, and my lifestyle right now, and I feel like it doesn't portray really in my recent videos. So maybe I can convey it here for the first time, particularly. I've um, noticed in your last videos, you seem to be a bit more kind of like, there's a fire in your belly now. There, 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 yeah, no, there is a fire, but it's like, I feel like I haven't conveyed like my true happiness and gratitude for where yeah. I'm at. And like, I am very grateful exactly where I'm at right now. And I'm at like the most serene point mm. in my life, I think. I've been working on not stressing out so much and I've okay. been trying to just like, just do what you want to do because whenever you do that, it works out for you. Yes. It works for me. Like yeah. I've been able to figure out how to make the things that I want work. Yeah. You know, like I don't, and, and maybe it's a combination of all my personality traits thrown into this fucking like cocktail that is me hmm. and maybe it works. Like, I don't know, but it's like, it's how I understand how to navigate life. But like the real fucking goal is like peace and serenity. And like, yeah. it's, it's not, it's not like, I literally just made a video about this. Like I don't chase happiness because I feel like as a society, hate that word, we have this idea of happiness as like culturally women are programmed to think like, Oh, like, you know, and I'm talking about obviously like straight women here, like they're culturally programmed to be like, all right, fucking family kids, white picket yeah. fence and like, like, and all that shit. And like, and I'm going to yeah. have my happy fairy tale fucking wedding, wedding and, and life. And I think that's less with our generation than it was our previous for generation, sure, but sure. obviously there's runoff, you know, the older I get, the more I realize like we only get to do this once dude. for sure. And it kind yeah. of freaks me out in a way, but it's almost also liberating because I can like think of myself, we only get to do this once. Yeah. 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 And that's my way of being like, being a little more open-minded about things and accepting about things as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. I asked Dan this question too, because I, I always often ask skateboarders this, like, what are your side hobbies and passions? And I know jujitsu is a massive part of your life now. Yeah. What, yeah. what kind of, what was your exposure to jujitsu? Like, what kind of got you into rolling? You know, once my brother died when I was like, when I was 30, yeah. I had this like experience of like, fuck man, any of us could just drop dead. What have mm -hmm. I not done in my life that I would be bummed on uh, not doing if I died right now. Yeah. So like a martial art was like something that like I've always been curious about. Yeah, so I've always wanted to do a martial art. It's just skating took up all the real estate in my life. Yes. Because I was like, because skating is also so like, it's oh, strenuous. if you're not fucking 100% in, like you're fucking whack. Yeah. Like if you're not fully 100% skater, you're not skater. Yeah. And it's like, what is this fucking no balance? Now I feel like it's different though. I feel like skateboarding is more like people like just getting into skating. They're like, oh, you know, I used to play cricket on the weekend and now I'm skateboarding and it's like a different... It's a recreation now. So you wanted to do it because you don't want to... Yeah, to yeah, it. yeah. I always wanted to do a martial art and uh, you know, I have a, have a wrestling background, like I wrestled yeah. in elementary school. Um, so it was either between jujitsu or Muay Thai. Uh -huh. Henry did jujitsu. So he's like, yeah. so randomly one day he's like, do you want to come to jujitsu with me tonight? So I did and I didn't ever have anyone ask me to go to Muay Thai with them. Yeah. So jujitsu was just kind of the one that stuck, but it's, it's... It's funny because like you asked me about imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I've 
I got, I felt so much less imposter syndrome doing jujitsu than I ever felt for skating. Maybe because you have that wrestling background. I think, kinda, I think because of that, and I think it's also because of the place I'm at in my life. Yeah. But and I just think that like when I started doing jujitsu, I liked it immediately. Like I wasn't mm, like you took to it. Like I was like, dude, this was like that's really cool. Yeah. But I like saw people like on the ground fucking tying people in knots. I'm like, dude, like. I want to learn how to do that. That's like such a crazy dope skill to have. Tell me about your first role. Your first time in the gym, first role was something. Dude, it was so casual, man. It was so yeah. It was so easy. Everyone was so nice. They went so really? light on me. Okay. I was fucking going like, you know, I'm like, all right, just fucking remember to sprawl. Keep your legs on the Yeah, board. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you know, and I we didn't even really work stand up. We just worked. I learned to Kimura. Okay. Kimura. Uh, that was like the first. That was my first class. That was the first thing I learned. Yeah, like you know the fucking. The dude, his name's Matt, uh -huh. who's also in a really fucking sick LA hardcore band called Twisted Kane. Oh, you should listen to him. Uh, dude, he went, he was so chill rolling with, and like he went so easy on me and just like right. let me kind of work and figure the shit out. And it's like, that's what people would do. Sounds you like know? a good experience. Yeah, but then you get a month in and everyone's like, all right, Time to he's, he's fucking here. He's our fucking punching bag now, <laughs> and like that. But dude, that's like what happens. Like you, yeah. get, you get like, and I fucking hate using terms like this, but it's so literal because this is like some manosphere fucking terms. Jujitsu is super fucking manosphere fucking yeah. Republican shit, dude. It's fucking yeah. crazy wild. But it's like, dude, I love the, love the fucking sport. It's fucking mm. amazing. Um, but it's like, dude, you literally like after that like month runs up, uh -huh. it's like. It's like, dude, you fucking, you're in with the sharks. Oh, you got a single swim. Dude, it's fully that, man. And dude, it's like, that's wild. Yeah, man. And it's cool though, because it's like, oh, I, I really wanted to swim. I was like, yeah. I really want to be able to survive. And it's like, dude, you're not fucking going to tap no one. Like mm. nothing's going to happen. And it just felt like surviving, like, especially rolling with like a fucking purple belt. If you like <laughs> finish the round and like, he didn't tap you, which first of all, I'm going to tell you. One, because he was going light. Yeah. But two, if you finish the round, it means like, oh, he didn't, he wasn't able to tap you, even him going light. Like, that still feels like a an feat. accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, man. For sure. It's awesome. I fucking love jujitsu. It makes me feel like it, it gets so much like uh, adrenaline mm. and like antsiness out because I'm a very like, a twitchy person. I sit, I tick, I you tap need to be my doing knee. Something. Yeah, I can't fucking sit still for hours. Yeah, so yeah, it's like, right. Doing like I'll, I'll lift right before, uh -huh. then fucking go to jujitsu, and then I come home, and it's like usually I fucking need a nap, mm -hmm. so I'm like fucking fried. Yeah. But it's like, dude, I can fucking sit in that chair for the rest of the goddamn day. Wow, it's like because you've got all your, you know. Yeah, yeah, and like you know, it's like I'm I'm kind of like bullheaded with shit. So it's yes, like, I fucking strong, that's how I roll. Strong minded. That's how I roll. Yeah. Like, Did you see? Uh, I can't. It might have been show sure your roll in Nike. Did it? Uh, oh, game? AP. Oh, AP, Albino and Prado. Okay. Yeah. That's who I did. I, that's who I'm sponsored by. Really? Okay. Albino and Prado. Yeah. I, do, I have the Nikes. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, he's killing it. Yeah. That's yeah. just wild to me to think about because like you were saying, like you're just in that kind of same stage that skateboarding was. Yeah, back it is. Then. It is. It's yeah. like this new thing. People get like the celebrities that do it. So people are like, oh, like what is this jujitsu? It's thing? super popular right now. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's like a meme to be into jujitsu. I don't even like get insecure about it because of how sick I think jujitsu is. Yeah. But like, like a lot of the times, like that kind of stuff can make me feel insecure. Like, I don't know if you remember that skate uh, Instagram account called Tiny Hat Skate Life. Yes. I was friends with her, but like also some of those memes, like, you know, it'd be like, it'd be like fucking referencing title fight and like uh, Tiny Hats. It was, and, it was, and I'm like, it was oh, I'm like, it's fucking <laughs> hitting me right here, dude. Yeah. yeah. But like, dude, uh, all the jujitsu memes, I don't even fucking, like people send it to me all the time of like, of like the guy, like, like someone breaking into the house, the guys on the yeah, ground he's watching ready to go. <laughs> It's like, dude, none of that shit makes me insecure because I just think jujitsu is so fucking Yeah, that's bad. awesome, dude. That's sick. Like, you can kind of, your passion can kind of flow different ways from, like, skateboarding yeah. to jujitsu. I guess I, I answered it. Right? Yeah, you did. You yeah. did. Okay. That's sick, man. I just want to make sure I fucking answer the question. Yes, and, uh, definitely. Thank you, dude. Thank you for having yeah. me over and feeding me and taking the time out of your day. Of course. Now. Thanks for <laughs> driving all the way over here. Yeah, so I didn't have to it was like half an hour from Anaheim. Yeah, wasn't fun, dude. All right. This is Skate Mates, where we talk about skating with our mates. This is my mate, my good mate, Del Decker. <laughs> so if you watch this video, you already know his channel. Go and check him out. Mm -hmm. um, your second channel is popping off. Yeah. So yeah, that's the one. That's the one that I'm like. The 
Infect the main focus. Yeah, we'll go. I'll chalk links in the description. Don't. Yeah. Don't, dude. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>